So I'm a cardiovascular interventionalist. So I have a general practice. I see patients in the office, but I also do invasive diagnostic procedures as well as interventional procedures. So actually I'm repairing blockages in the legs, kidneys, towards the brain, the neck, and the heart, of course. Um, I also do structural heart disease. My work week would be usually two to two and a half days in the office, and then two, two and a half days in the cardiac cath lab here. Um, and so from a physical standpoint, what that entails, I'm standing in one spot essentially, and because of the exposure to radiation from fluoroscopic viewing, um, I have to wear leaded equipment to protect myself, and, and that's taxing on the body. So it, the, the lead used to weigh roughly around 40 pounds, and I think now they have lighter lead that's somewhere between 25 to 30 pounds is what I would have to wear on my shoulders and on my hips. Uh, and the concern with that or the issues is cervical spine and lumbar spine uh, issues, difficulties with herniate discs, bulging discs, essentially back problems, which has led to many interventional people have to retire from their job or go on disability after several years of doing this. Uh, so we have concerns about the musculoskeletal aspect of the equipment that we have to use to protect ourselves, but also the exposure to the radiation itself. So we've concentrated since probably the beginning of invasive procedures fluoroscopically was on the safety of the patients and the exposure to the radiation, which is very limited and, and relatively small amount. But for us getting it day in, day out, it's pretty high exposure. The complexity of the cases have gotten they're more complicated these days. The older patient population, sicker population, and patients that can't get uh, surgical repair, so we have to do it percutaneously. So zero gravity, you know, it made sense. It's, it's got, actually protects us more from the radiation, so it can be thicker lead, so it can be more protective. It also covers our cranium, you know, our face is being covered by the shield. Uh, we, before we were not using that, we wear leaded glasses, but now it's protect, there's more instances of left side brain cancers, for example, um, because we're closer, our left side of our body is closer to the machine, but now with zero gravity, since it covers up to the top of our scalp, we're more protected that way. Um, and our exposure actually is reduced substantially, more than 50%. So I think that the availability of the zero gravity um, is gonna certainly um, prolong my career. But I certainly don't think about retirement because of a medical condition where before it was sort of painful, you know, sometimes to do the, the job that I was doing because of some weight related pains and aches. One of the vascular surgeons had asked, is there anything that we can do to protect ourselves because of the weight? So actually we approached our administration and we laid out the concerns that we had for ourselves. and. Um, and fortunately, they're very responsive. And uh, we purchased it initially, just a couple of, of the devices for us to use that were mobile, that we could use in our cath lab here. And, and the operating room would then borrow it, and the vascular surgeons were actually also liking it. And then our administration realized that although the radiology was not requesting it, their exposure levels were very high. Uh, so ultimately, the the hospital supported, you know, for our well-being, the exposure and musculoskeletal issues that we had. I think we have them now in all our rooms. Certainly all the cath labs have them, and I think radiology has also extended it. And then we have units that we can use in the operating room that can be moved from room to room.